This episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Thrillist and Gamefly. Today on Lifehacker, we're going to talk a little bit about urban survival. We're going to be showing you how to make a laptop bag out of a hoodie and figure out when to pee when you're at a movie. I'm going to see if I can make a lamp out of a tuna can. And we're also going to be tethering our iOS and Android phones to get Wi-Fi on the go. I'm going to see if we can open a bottle of wine with nothing but a shoe and get to the bottom of those free public Wi-Fi networks you always see at airports. And of course, at the end, we will have our downloads of the day. So, let's get started. If you're on the go and you need a bag, you can put together a makeshift laptop bag with your hoodie pretty easily. And this is how you do it. You just need your laptop and you can lay out your hoodie on the table. Make sure that if you have a zipper, that it's not going to touch the part you're going to put the laptop on and that it's already zipped up. So just lay it out here, zipper down, put the uh, laptop closest to the bottom, wrap this around, and then we're going to do one more wrap here. And I'm going to pull the hood up and over the edges that we just wrapped around. Make sure you want to get that in real tight because you don't want your laptop falling out. And then, what you have to do just to get that extra security is tie the drawstrings. And then your laptop's pretty securely in there. You can just put it over your shoulder like this, tie it on, you're all done. You can move around and the laptop's not going <laughs> to fall out. So it's something that you may not use all the time, but it might be good in a pinch. Yeah, exactly. If you've ever been in a movie and had to go to the bathroom, it gets kind of annoying because you think you're going to miss the movie and you want to figure out what, you know, like when do you go. Uh, RunP is an app that you can get online or on your mobile phone to actually tell you when is a good time to go to the bathroom during that film. Okay, so uh, if I'm in the film and I want to go, uh, how do I know that it's time? Well, RunP has a like a couple of things on the website where you'll see little segments in each movie during for the whole duration of the film and each point uh, will be what happened in the movie and what time uh, that moment happens in the movie and those are the boring parts so you can skip right over those and still find out what actually happened nice. so you're not missing any spoilers but also like if you have the mobile app you can go in and set a timer so it reminds you okay time to pee when you're Brilliant. in the movie <laughs> they thought of everything yeah so that's it that's run pee this episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Thrillist. You know how you have that one friend who hooks you up with cool new bands before anyone else has even heard of them? Thrillist is like that, but for cool new stuff and places to go. Want to know about a Star Wars burlesque show, a beer garden that screens 80s flicks, or a new restaurant with a sushi robot? Sign up for Thrillist, a free daily email that sifts through the crap to find the best new bars, restaurants, events, and services. Whatever it is, they promise it will not suck. Hit up thrillist.com hacker to get started right away. Opa. Okay, so we're talking urban survival, so let's say that things get particularly apocalyptic. Um, you're trapped in your workspace with your coworkers, there's zombies clawing at the doors, and you need some light, you need a heat source. Uh, we've been told that a tuna can with a hole in it and some string can work as a lamp. Um, maybe you cook something on it, maybe you light it and it gives you light for a while and then you can eat what's inside. Um, basically all you need is the can of tuna, uh, a string, a hammer or something. Since we're doing an office type thing, we're gonna use a, a pen because you probably have one on hand. So basically, what we're gonna do is puncture the top with our hammer. Push the string down, grab your trusty lighter, fire that up, and there you go. Um, the frayed edge is probably not the best for our lamp, but it's clearly burning quite well. Um, this has been said to uh, be burnable for a good three hours or so. Um, I don't know, so if things ever get really, really awful in your life, uh, you can always turn to your tuna can lamp.
You can get Wi-Fi pretty much anywhere you go nowadays, but if you happen to be in an area that doesn't have internet, you can actually use your smartphone's internet on your computer. Whitson's going to show you how to tether your Android phone with PDA Net, and I'm going to show you how to tether with MyWi on your jailbroken iPhone. Many phones can get tethering plans through their carriers, but they cost a lot of money and they aren't necessarily available on every phone. With an Android app called PDA Net, you can get these features for a one-time fee of just $15. Just download the app from the market, and then download the corresponding app on your Mac or Windows PC. Then, when you're out and about and you need internet, just plug in your phone, start up PDA Net, and connect to it on your computer. Within no time, you'll be browsing the web on your 3G connection, no matter where you are. Tethering with your iOS device is really, really easy. All you need is an app called MyWi, which you can get from the Cydia store. To access the Cydia store and download this MyWi application, you'll need to jailbreak your iOS device. And if you want to do that, check out this link. Okay, so once you've downloaded MyWi from the Cydia store, you can turn your phone into a Wi-Fi router. So I'm loading up the MyWi app right here. You can see that. And then you have a few options along the top row. The one we want to select is the Wi-Fi symbol, which is number two on the top. This will turn your phone into a Wi-Fi hotspot. So all you really have to do is name the hotspot and then turn it on and it will start up. Now this won't put a password on your phone, so that's something you're going to want to do yourself. To do that, you can use web security to enter a password. As we've noted on Lifehacker in the past, web security isn't exactly the best, but it is better than nothing. Once you've got everything set up, all you need to do is connect to your phone just like you'd connect to any other Wi-Fi router, except in some cases you'll see it as a computer-to-computer -computer connection. That's all you have to do. So we really want to get into this wine bottle. We don't have a corkscrew though. So uh, we have heard that with a shoe uh, and a hard surface like a wall, you can uncork the bottle with a little persistence and a lot of bang. All right, so we've got our wine bottle and we've got our shoe. So let's try it out. I am going to put a towel around it. Should it break, I hopefully won't be that bad off. And now you basically just start pounding. So far, I am seeing no progress. I could be wrong. That's just your pessimism. Come on, bottle. wanted this one to work. I'm really not seeing any progress here. Yeah, that's just... So, while I don't think that we can say that this never works, um, at least with this really cheap bottle of Cabernet we got, it is not going to work. Today's episode of Lifehacker is brought to you by Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service, offering you a choice from over 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at $15.95 a month. Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. There are no late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. Once you're done playing a game, send it back to Gamefly and they will send you the next game available on your list. If you really like the game you're playing, select Keep It on the Gamefly website and the game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even mail you the case and the manuals free of charge. Lifehacker members get a 15-day free trial when they go to Gamefly.com slash hacker. Hey Lifehacker, what the f*** is free public Wi-Fi? You take your smartphone, you take your laptop, you bring it to the airport, the library, anywhere public, and you see this network called free public Wi-Fi. But it never works. Uh, what is it and why does it exist everywhere you go? Here's a little bit about that strange self-promoting network. Free public Wi-Fi is technically a weird Windows glitch, but it's more like that annoying email forward you've been getting since the 90s. Back when Wi-Fi wasn't quite so common, Windows XP did a funny thing if you tried to connect to the internet and couldn't get anything. It would create its own ad hoc network, basically asking another computer to connect to it directly. And XP would give that network the same name as the last network it was able to successfully connect to. So back in the day, there was someone, and let's call him Surfer Zero, who connected to a network that may have actually been a free, public Wi-Fi network. 
which, you know, great for Surfer Zero, but the next time he tried to connect, he couldn't, so his XP computer created an ad hoc connection called, you guessed it, free public Wi-Fi. Someone nearby tried to connect to that one, and later on, when they couldn't connect, they created their own quote-unquote free public Wi-Fis. It was a perfect storm of a great name, a weird bug, and people desperately not wanting to pay for internet. Even though Microsoft patched the behavior in a service pack later, it's still a network you'll see around sometimes. Is it harmful to connect to fake free public Wi-Fi? Probably not. You're just trying to connect to some random Windows XP user stuck with this weird bug. But don't do it in any case, because you might unintentionally expose your files to somebody. So the fix is simple enough. Don't ever try to connect to something called free public Wi-Fi. And if you're using Windows XP, consider upgrading to Windows 7, or at least getting Service Pack 3 for your system. And now you know what free public Wi-Fi is and why it's useless. <laughs>Before we go, let's take a look at the downloads of the day. Okay, let's see what we've got. We have Jiwire for iPhone and Android, which is a Wi-Fi finder that can help you find Wi-Fi on the go. Cab for me, which is also for Android and iPhone, and it can help you find a cab wherever you are just using your smartphone. Lastly, we have LastPass, which is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, as well as probably about every mobile platform you can think of, and it will help you remember your passwords, generate new secure passwords, and enter them when you go to new sites. Good evening. It's intermission time. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully we've improved your arsenal for surviving on the go. We'll see you next time.